But let's go ahead and move on, guys, to topic number seven real quick. And that right there is some some potential beef going on between Josh Reed and, of course, Ray Fisher and Buffy Angel star Charisma Carpenter. You know, uh, a lot's been a lot's been going on with this right here. Now, I got the original part right here from Variety. Ray Fisher accuses Josh Whedon of abusive, abusive, unprofessional behavior on Justice League set. Now, this came out July of last year, and I'm pretty sure you guys have heard of it. However, more people are coming out. And like I was saying, Buffy and Angel Star Charisma Carpenter comes forward with new Josh Whedon abusive details updated. Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel actress Charisma Carpenter accuses Josh Whedon of abusive behavior in lengthy statement posted online. Also, we got an update. Sarah Michelle Geller made a comment and uh, Amber Benson as well. But Car Carpenter, the actress who played Cordella Chase on Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel comes forward with new allegations of Josh Whedon's abusive behavior. For, uh, abusive behavior. For years, Whedon was a major figure within the genre entertainment, serving as the mastermind behind Buffy, Firefly, and his peak at the MCU's first two Avengers movies over the years. Uh, however, his star power has become to diminish, particularly as more allegations of misconduct emerge. And so, uh, of course, we're not going to. She wrote a long. I read this whole thing, but it's pretty long and she gives good details. And if it's true, it's horrible. You know, and this quote from Ray Fisher, Josh Whedon on set treatment of the cast and crew of Justice League was gross, abusive, unprofessional and completely unacceptable. He was enabled in many ways by Jeff Johns and John Berg. And so a lot of people was calling um, him crazy at first, uh, but now more and more people are coming out. Oh, and real quick, Sir Michelle Geller, while I'm proud to have my name associated with the Buffy Summers, I don't, I, I don't want to be forever associated with Josh Whedon. I'm more focused on raising my family and surviving a pandemic currently, so I will not be making any further statements at this time. But I stand with all survivors of abuse and I, abuse, and I'm proud of them for speaking out. Oh man, one take, big dog. I know, we, I know, we like Avengers, the fir the first two, and Josh Whedon was a part of this. You know, he did the Justice League and Ray F beefing with Ray Fisher. What do you think about all these comments, man? What you think? Okay, I'm I'm gonna have to. Uh... This is this is tricky for me because I haven't I haven't read all the statements. You know, what I'm saying? I've been seeing a little bit of the stuff with uh, Ray Fish. I've been seeing some of it pop up every now and then. Well, mm. pretty frequently, honestly. It's just I haven't seen exactly what abusive behavior they were talking about because in my mind, this, and this is just me, this is the only place where. You can hate your boss for how your boss acts, and then like they get in trouble for it. Because I know I, I personally I haven't had uh, many jobs to where uh, I didn't like the boss. Uh, I haven't like my profession. I haven't had like a bunch of jobs. Period. So I've only had one to where like oh man, I really don't like this dude. But I just like it's just I thought that's how people. Work with their bosses. Granted, that's not okay, and 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 those people should be where well, they shouldn't be able to treat their like employees and so on and so forth like that. It's just it's it's always weird to me, you know, the the and the timing of certain things. And yeah, that's just me though. I got you, bro. I got you, Larry. What you think, man? What you think? Well, first, just uh, to address a little bit what what. What uh, one take big dog just said, you know, it is true that that Hollywood is one of those places where if you don't like your boss, your boss is mistreating you and you are big enough, you can speak out and be heard. And that is in part because, you know, directors are directors are big when it like as far as inside the park ball They're people. They know all the, the movers and shakers inside the system but the celebrities have fans mm -hmm. and lots and lots and lots of them so when you are in a big franchise like he is or when you're selling you know sarah michelle geller and you have millions and millions of fans and all of a sudden they put out a tweet 
and people are asking questions now like wait a minute why did this why was this man not even allowed to be alone with this teenage girl I mean, people start asking those questions. I mean, I'll be perfectly honest with you. When I think when I if as an if I was an executive with one of these studios right now, with as far as Josh Whedon is concerned, he would be he would be completely hands on. I would be like, we don't I don't want anything to do with this guy. Cause to me, I think he is another Harvey Weinstein waiting to happen. I think it is just that we're at the beginning phases of seeing this and hearing about this. And it may not be that we're hearing about him, you know, physically raping people, although we might, I don't know. But I think all the abuse that we're going to hear coming out, all the people that are going to come out and start documenting their experiences, I think we are going to see another Harvey Weinstein situation. And the problem is, is that the fallout's going to be pretty broad because there's all these other people out there that have been enabling him, you know? Right. And, and part and see part of it is uh, that I feel like it was a little bit more localized with Weinstein. It's because Weinstein was the boss. He was the boss. He was the dude that ran the production company. He ran you know Weinstein Films. It was his thing. Yeah. You know between him and it was between him and his brother it was their thing. So, but Josh Whedon is he's a director. You know he's reporting to the studio execs and the studio execs are protecting him. So there's going to be fallout if they keep on protecting them and the, and people, I mean, because don't get me wrong, there is nothing more than that that a journalist, an entertainment journalist is going to love if you have somebody from Variety or the Hollywood Reporter or the Washington, you know, or the, excuse me, the New York Times or LA Times that's on the entertainment beat. If they can take down a big ass director like that, do you think that, that that's one of those things that will make your career? Yeah. I mean, you write those stories, you win a, you know, you you win all kinds of awards, then you write your book. Those are that is a career making thing. And you don't think that people are gonna want to talk to them? You don't think that those reporters are gonna go after this story? They're probably all over it. Right on. I think they I mean they need to just say, I think this dude at this point, they need to just that everybody should just say, We're gonna be hands off you, homie. You're going to have to go and, I don't know, maybe you need to go get some therapy. Maybe you just need to go take a back seat somewhere for a couple of years and relax and let your name cool down, you know, get some of the heat off you and then try and come back. But I think I, it's looking like another Weinstein situation, just maybe with a, with different, you know, just with different specifics. So yeah, how I feel about this, uh, I'm disappointed. Uh, if the if everything that, if Josh Whedon is abusive on set, uh, because I was a fan of him as a director. Uh, I did like his content, his humor. Um, I like the Avengers one and two. Uh, but if these are true, and I'm just saying alleged because I wasn't there, you know, that's just something I can't condone. And so uh, I do like it when people come and speak up, um, you know, and Larry, not Larry, but uh, uh, Ray Fisher was doing that last year. And you have three white women that are coming out now in defense of a black man. Uh, yeah. It's just really not common. So uh, that just uh, that's just interesting to me too, uh, but uh, yeah, Josh, I was supporting you, man. But excuse me, if you were being abusive on set, that's not really cool. That's not really cool. Uh, I mean, you know, people have to realize, you know, be every people have to realize that they can't just say and do whatever they want because they are uh, because they're rich or they're famous or they're connected. They really they have to understand that. That in today's society and the and, and how connected we are today, that the things that you say are going to get out there. And there's a lot of people that are not going to be okay with the abusive, like the, the abusive behavior. Like you can have different political ideals. You can be a Republican or a Democrat or 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 a Libertarian, but if you start being abusive or start saying things that are that are you know against other people like you can maybe you believe in that in school choice you're a republican you believe in in school vouchers or in you know fiscal responsibility whatever that means to them or you want to not fund you know you know public health care but if you start talking about gay people if you start talking about you know ethnic minorities you start talking about other people and you're being abusive you don't you're not going to be protected anymore simply because you're rich and or yeah. famous that's see, yeah, that, that, see, that's my that's my thing. I don't I don't necessarily when they said abusive, I didn't know the specifics simply because I haven't looked into the, like the reports. 
because in my mind, I'm thinking it's just like, you know, this guy is mean or, or like this, the way he, like his style isn't, isn't for me. You know, like, I, I don't like the way he's like directing me and something like that. As far as like the, because uh, Larry brought up uh, Harvey Weinstein, that guy was like using his power to, you know, he was Larry, people. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I didn't know if Josh Whedon was doing stuff like that. I, I didn't know. I thought it was. I thought it was something much more uh, simple. Nah, just yeah. like you know. I mean, you. I mean, you got you got levels of verbal abuse and stuff like that. You know, but I. I. I, I mean, you, you do what you like, but uh, when you can't they, they, be alone they, with when they when they have when you're on set and they're saying you cannot be alone with this female, there's a problem. Like when it yeah, got yeah. to that point, when it got yeah. to the point when they said, like, if it, like, if I was an executive and it ever got to, like, it, I hope it would never even get to that point. But if it got to the point where they said, you cannot be alone with this female on set ever. That's an issue. To me, that says this person should no longer be employed. He should not be in this position any longer. Yeah. Period. Oh, he and, should uh, be. Gone. And and if you uh if you if you get a chance, one take big dog uh. She wrote all this on social media. Uh, it's like two or three pages. She gets some details, uh, like how you know she was pregnant and, and like you know he wanted her to be on set at like one a.m. and just being mean and is the baby really yours? You sure? See, I mean, not not, not the, are the baby really his or something like that. Are you, are you sure you want to keep it? And you know, look, look, that's just like that's that's see, I, that stuff. That stuff right there, I completely understand. You, you want them gone for that, but that that's but that was my point. I didn't know. What type of abusive uh, yeah. uh, power they was they was talking referring to? Already, I, I feel you, man.